you've been wondering how you can optimize your Shopify store for speed, well, you're in the right place. Not many Shopify merchants know that the easiest way to improve your Shopify store speed is to identify Shopify apps that you have installed that are slowing your store down and removing them. But how do you figure out which apps are slowing you down? Well, this video will be answering that, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Patrick from Code That Converts, and my goal is to help you improve the shopping experience of your Shopify store so that you can get more sales and get more engagement from your customers. I made this video because in my experience of working with Shopify Plus stores, every Shopify merchant eventually deals with speed issues on their store. And even when the business is doing thousands of dollars in sales, optimizing your store speed can be just the thing to unlock even more sales for you as a business. This video will cover topics like understanding what core web vitals are and how they can impact your Shopify store speed, understanding how added JavaScript and CSS files from your Shopify apps can be slowing your store down, and how to use speed tools to figure out which apps are the ones that are actually slowing your store down. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll be sharing with you three-step process you can follow to figure out what to do next once you've identified which Shopify apps are negatively impacting your Shopify store speed. And while you're watching this video, why don't you drop me a comment in the comment box below and let me know what Shopify apps you're currently using on your store or which apps you're interested in using. I'd love to hear more about what you're using on your store and if enough people make a comment about a specific app, I might do a tutorial on it. Okay, so if we're gonna talk about speed, first thing you have to discuss is Core Web Vitals. Core Web Vitals are a specific set of features that Google uses to determine the overall user experience of a web page. So if you were to translate that definition to a Shopify store, it's the way Google determines how the overall performance for your customers are gonna be on your store. There are three factors that contribute to Core Web Vitals. Those factors are Largest Contentful Paint, or LCP, First Input Delay, or FID, and Cumulative Layout Shift, or CLS. So LCP has to do with how fast the largest element on the screen loads. So for an e-commerce store, that might be the first image at the top of the page. FID has to do with how long it takes for the store to be ready to be interacted with by a customer or by a user on the store. So let's say if someone were to try to click the call to action button at the top of your page or try to interact with your navigation menu, FID controls when the person's able to do that. And finally, CLS or cumulative layout shift has to do with how stable the page is while it's loading. So just to illustrate this real quick, if you've ever loaded up a website on your phone or on the computer, and then as the page is loading, you try to click something and out of nowhere, something just pops up in your face and you click that by accident, if you know what I'm talking about, that's cumulative layout shift. But for this video, we're focusing on first input delay because it has to do with user interactivity. First input delay is usually impacted by assets or script files running in your Shopify store on your theme. Things like CSS files and JavaScript files are the main culprits that can impact your first input delay. So all the excessive JavaScript or CSS files that the Shopify apps that you're using are injecting into your Shopify theme are gonna be the things that will be negatively impacting your first input delay. Think of it this way. When your store is being loaded, imagine you have a Shopify app that has some heavy script files in it, and those script files take a little bit of time to load. Imagine you have some other speed-related issues as well, and those two things combined together cause the load page to have an additional two seconds that it wouldn't have had without those script files from the app. In that time, a customer might be trying to interact with the page and they won't be able to, and that might be enough to get the person to leave your store altogether. This is especially true for customers that are navigating on your store for their mobile phone. So with all that in mind, you wanna make sure you're optimizing for first input delay because it's one of the things that can get people to leave your store and you don't want anyone leaving your store. Well, the apps that you may or may not need, you forgot are still installed in your Shopify store, could be killing all your sales. But if you're not, the tips I'm gonna give you in this video should help you deal with. First thing we're gonna cover is how to test your Core Web Vitals. And we're gonna be using a tool called GT Metrics to do this. GT Metrics is a tool that you can use to do a quick pulse check of the Core Web Vitals of your Shopify store. So you can just type in the URL of your Shopify store in here, 
For this test, I'm gonna use a site that I used before, Lagos.com. And if you pay for a premium version of the GT Metrics tool, it gives you additional testing options, such as doing mobile testing and things of that nature. Lots of cool stuff in here, actually. But for this, we're just gonna focus on the stuff you can do with a free account. So you're just gonna click analyze. And I'm not gonna wait for this to analyze because I did it already over in this window right here. You can see this is the results of the test from Lagos.com on GT Metrics. These are the core web vitals right here. LCP, large skin temple paint, total blocking time, and cumulative layout shift. You can see that all the scores need work, but you're gonna wanna focus on this one. Now you might notice that it's called total blocking time. Before I mentioned a metric called FID, first input delay. These two metrics are actually very closely related. So even though total blocking time and first input delay technically measure two different things, they're both metrics you can use to see how interactive your site is, as in how quickly the site is able to be interacted with by your customers. So you can just think of TBT total blocking time as being the same thing as first input delay because improving one will improve the other. So TBT is not good and it gives us some more information down here. But like I said, you just want to use this to get a quick pulse check. There's a different tool that I want to show you that we're going to be using to get a more closer look at what's actually contributing to the TBT or total blocking time and also contributing to FID, first input delay. So that tool is right here, web page test. Webpagetest.org is the name of the tool. Uh, hold on, do I have a window of it open by itself? You can just type in webpagetest.org and it's gonna take you to a window where you can enter in a URL for it to analyze. Now keep in mind, this test actually takes a little while, but it gives you lots of useful information. So it pretty much tells you how you're doing. Another quick pulse check. The scores for the Core Web Vitals are right here, LCP, CLS, and TBT. As you can see, this test confirms things are not going well. Let's take a closer look at TBT. If you scroll down, you're gonna see this thing called a waterfall. The waterfall is very important because it'll tell you what's actually going on when things are loading into your page. You can see that there's multiple waterfalls because what the test does is it runs three separate times. Let's look at the first waterfall. As you can see from the waterfall, there's this thing right here that says render blocking resource. You can see the little circle, the orange circle with an X through it. So those are all the things that are contributing to your total blocking time score or your FID score. So these are the things that are stopping your page from being interactive to your customer sooner as it's loading in. So let's use this first one for example. You can see right here, cdn.shopify.com, jquery.min.js. So what this tells me is that on lagos.com, they're loading in a JavaScript library called jQuery. jQuery is known to be a very big JavaScript library and it's known to pull down page speed. So this is one of the things that I'd look to optimize first when trying to improve lagos.com. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pay attention to all the files that have that little orange circle X through it. And you're just gonna write the name of each file file down. Yeah, so go through the entire waterfall. Maybe you might want to go through each of the waterfalls because the test actually has three of them. This is the first one that I clicked on. I'm going to go through each of the waterfalls or even just the first one, whatever you want to do. And you're going to want to find all of the render blocking resources. Once you got them all written down, you can look at the name of the resource, maybe even Google the name of the resource and figure out which Shopify app is contributing to that thing. So for example, right here, I see rapid-cdn.yo Yota.com. I already know that Yoda is a Shopify app. Funny enough, it's a Shopify app that's supposed to boost page speed performance. But as you can see, it is contributing to total blocking time, which is fine. The whole purpose of this is just to figure out which apps are contributing to it. The next part of this is going to be figuring out what to do next with that information. So as I said, you're going to want to check to see which ones are render blocking and you're going to want to keep note of that. Okay, so now you know what Core Web Vitals are and you have a few tools you can use to get a pulse check of how to check your Core Web Vitals as well as how to dive deeper into FID and TBT and figure out which apps and third-party scripts on your Shopify store are contributing to slowing your page speed down. Okay, you got that. Well, 
What now? Well, if you remember earlier in the video, I said that I'd be giving you a simple three-step process you can use to figure out what to do next once you have a better understanding of what's going on in your Shopify store, as well as what apps could be contributing to slowing your paid speed down. Well, here it is. Step one. First thing you need to do is you need to sit down and figure out the purpose behind every Shopify app you currently have installed. At the end of the day, every Shopify app serves to help you do one of three things. Either save time, get more sales, or to give your customers a better experience. If you have a Shopify app that's not doing at least one of these three things, what are you really even doing? You need to be able to clearly articulate how each and every app you have installed currently on your store does one or more of those things and contributes to you boosting your conversions getting more engagement and getting more sales. And if you can't articulate how an app is doing that, well, maybe you should consider why you even have that app on your store in the first place, especially if it's one of the apps that's contributing to your negative TPT or FID score. Step number two, reach out to the customer support team or technical support team for the Shopify app that you're using. If you've identified a Shopify app that could be contributing to lowering your paid speed and you determine that this is an app that you might wanna keep on your store, the next step here is to reach out to the team that built the app and see if they can help you figure out how to optimize the app on your Shopify theme. So usually what happens when you install a Shopify app is the app injects code into your theme. It injects CSS code and it injects JavaScript code. These two types of code can be optimized on your page or on your site to allow for it to load after all the critical assets that are required by your page have loaded. Let's say for example, you're loading the homepage. There's a bunch of things that the homepage needs to load in so that the customer can see everything that they need to see on the homepage. Your app can load in after everything that's important has already loaded in. So reach out to the customer support team and see if they can help you figure out how to do that. Reach out to them and ask them, hey, how can I defer the scripts that this app is using in order to improve the page load speed. They're good developers, they'll know exactly what you're talking about, and they'll be willing to help you out with that. Step number three, consider removing any app that only adds a feature to your user interface only. For example, let's say you have an app that adds a mega menu to your Shopify store, like this one you see on the screen right now. This is the kind of app that you really don't need to have on your Shopify store because the mega menu is one of those things that either if you're using a paid theme, the theme already has one, or you can get a Shopify developer to just build one for you. There's no point in having a mega menu app, especially since it's the kind of feature that you can build into your Shopify theme and not even have to have an app for this. Having an app to add a feature like this will just add unnecessary bloat to your Shopify store and it'll bring down your page load speed. So you definitely don't want that. At the end of the day, you need to sit down and figure out, like I said, why every app is on your store and how it helps you either save time, get more sales, or give your customers a much better experience. So just to reiterate, that three-step process is one, first figure out why every Shopify app is even installed on your store in the first place. So that if an app is giving you some speed issues, you can determine whether you need it or not. Two, reach out to the customer support team for the app. See if you can optimize that app for speed so that if you actually need the app, it can actually be loaded in after all the critical assets and scripts are loaded into your page, thus improving your TBT and FID scores. And three, you want to remove any apps that only add simple user interface features to your Shopify theme and have a Shopify developer either build that directly into your theme or make use of a paid theme that already has that. Okay, that about does it. You now have everything you need to figure out which Shopify apps are negatively impacting your paid speed. And with that three-step process, you can sit down and figure out if it's something you actually need or not. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. By doing this, you can help me reach more Shopify merchants like you who are trying to improve the shopping experience of their store for their customers.